We are beginning a new series called The Chosen. As part of our new September-October series at the movies, we'll be focusing on the online TV series called The Chosen. This is the number one crowdfunded media project of all time, raising over 11 million to produce the first eight episodes of season one. We'll be watching each episode on a Wednesday evening together at 7 p.m. So look out for all the links and how to sign up on the app to watch absolutely free. You can host a watch party from the app and invite friends and family from anywhere in the world to watch along and chat while you're online together. You can find all necessary links on our website and social media platforms. Alternatively, contact info at gracepoint.co.za if you're not able to find the links and they will be forwarded to you. Following on from the Wednesday watch party with our Thursday night Bible study, which will expand on the theme and you can interact with one of our ministers via Zoom. Be sure to join us there. Our message focus on Sunday mornings will wrap up the episode as well as daily devotions to help you meditate and pray on what God might be saying to you as you continue on this amazing online experience with us as a community. Beginning the 13th of September, our Ulta Prayer team are hosting online prayers via Zoom. You can sign up and connect every second and fourth Sunday from 9.30 a.m. directly after the first morning service. Ask to be prayed for or bring a prayer request from a loved one to a member of the prayer team. Links will be provided directly after the service on our WhatsApp and Facebook as well as the YouTube chat function. There will also be links available on our website under the prayer page. Join us for our next Alpha from the 1st of October. This will be a unique experience as the whole event will be broadcast online. Our leaders have already done the Alpha UK through HTP and are ready with all the online content, links and reminders to make this a successful experience for everyone involved. You can download the sign up form from our website or email alpha at gracepoint.co.za to sign up. Look out for more details in the following week. We still have our blanket, food and dignity packs. Remember that people are still in need of blankets, food and dignity packs, as I'm sure you're well aware that we're still in a crisis, as well as people who have run out of provision, money and more during this long period of uncertainty. You can drop off your items at the church foyer and we'll make sure they are distributed as speedily as possible. Thank you to all those that have been giving so generously and consistently. We appreciate all your you do for the work of the kingdom and this community. God bless you. Please remember to connect online with Zoom to join us as we take communion together online at 9.30 a.m. today directly after our first service and before our 10 a.m. service. We look forward to seeing you there. Hope you enjoyed the service this morning, but before we go, let's find out what's happening in Gen now for all our kids, GAP and youth ministries. Good morning and a very warm welcome from the Grace Point Kids Online team. Today is the last lesson in our series about investigating the parables in the Bible. We end off with a praise party with some of our worship team members and Greg Jordan, our worship pastor, visiting us in the studio. We use the parable of the royal wedding to talk about celebrations, invitations, keeping our promises and being ready to go to heaven when Jesus comes back to fetch us. We continue our worship feast with Kezia, who has two amazing songs lined up with easy actions to follow. In the Doodle Studio, we make our own music instruments today and end off with lots of fun, noise, celebration and music. Parents, please don't forget our lesson review, age-appropriate craft and weekly Bible studies will be available on our website after the lesson. Now next week we start our new series at the movies, one week later than that of our adults. So please look out for more information regarding this series on all our kids media platforms. Hey everyone, it's Ilza from the GAP Ministry and I really hope that you're doing well. This week at GAP we are starting our very exciting brand new September and October series called GAP at the Movies. In this series we are going to be looking at what we can learn from a series of short films and movies and what this tells us all about God and about who God has created us. So join us today for our kickoff of the series as we look at it. You can find it on our YouTube, our Facebook, our Instagram as well as on the Gap page on the Grace Point website. Please do join us for this exciting series over the months of September and October. The Edge team has prepared a unique experience for all our youth who are following the Chosen series. And so please join us on our different social media platforms for a unique youth experience based on the first episode of our Chosen series. Look forward to connecting with you.
Good morning and welcome to Grace Point Online, church like we've never had it before. I don't know if you've got used to watching church on your screens, but um, if you have, I'm really glad that you have and I'm glad that you're here uh, today. We certainly are discovering what it means to be doing church in the last quarter of 2020. Can you believe that we're getting towards the end of the year? I'm too scared to even ask how many more Sundays before Christmas. Well, um, it's springtime and uh, we're excited about things that are happening in the life of the church. You'll be hearing a little bit more about that later on. But right for now, I want you to just really extend a very, very warm welcome to Grace Point. If you are new to Grace Point, especially to you, a very warm welcome. As you may have noticed, today is pretty in pink, keeping up with the spring theme, and you'll see more about that later on uh, in the service. But welcome to Grace Point this morning. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for a new season. We thank you, Lord God, that you are a God of new seasons. Things have really been upside down for us all this year, Lord. And it seems as if we've almost lost the way things are or the way things were. It seems and sometimes feels, Lord God, that we have lost our rhythm. But we thank you, Lord God, that while everything else is changing, you don't ever change. We thank you, Lord God, that your promises for our lives are true today. We thank you, God, that we can always place our hope and trust in you. To be honest with you, God, we haven't quite got used to worshiping this way. We miss being with each other. We miss the fellowship. We miss the corporate worship. We miss greeting each other. We miss the coffee after the service. But Lord God, we know that you have never left us or forsaken us. And we know that this season will give way to a new season. In the meantime, Lord, continue to do your work in our lives as you shape us and mold us. Be with us today as we worship you in our various places. We choose today, Lord God, to honor and glorify you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Friends, let's worship together. Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon and be gracious to you. The Lord turn in face toward you and give peace. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon and be gracious to you. 
This new series is going to be mind-blowing, The Chosen. Um, it's taken off a, the greatest f- uh, crowdfunding ever done outside of Hollywood to finance a movie. Now, for those of you who are over, let me get this right, maybe over 45, don't know what crowdfunding is. Well, crowdfunding is a way that you can raise money normally over social media, and you could actually fund something uh, that's not funded either through the banks or, in this case, Hollywood. And so people put out, uh, uh, um, like this, in this case, a movie or a, a TV series, or sometimes they'll put out a product, and or even sometimes we've known people who have raised money to go somewhere or even for, to, for hospital or something like that. So basically, crowdfunding is where you put a product out and then you ask people um, to donate money uh, to it. <clears throat> now, this, this uh, series called The Chosen, uh, about the life of Jesus from different people's perspectives, was crowdfunded, and millions and millions and millions of dollars was raised through crowdfunding. So the first episode was uh, sent to you last week in that via our social media platforms. Please won't you check it out, and every Monday it'll be coming through your mail or through social media from Grace Point for the next week's link to watch that episode. So today we kick it off, and it's going to be about calling. Uh, Jackie's going to be speaking to us about your name being called. So enjoy the new series. We're excited about it. Between Jackie, myself, and Similo, we're excited to be preaching this new series over the next couple of weeks. The Chosen. of what I've done, but because of who you are, I am a flower quickly fading, here today and gone tomorrow, a wave tossed in the ocean, a vapor in the wind, still you hear me when I'm calling, Lord you catch me when I'm falling, you told me who again Who am I that the voice to come to see would call out through the rain and calm the storm in me Not because of who I am but because of what you've done Not because of what I've done but because of who you are Just 
in the ocean, vapor in the wind, still you hear me when I'm calling, Lord you catch me when I'm falling, and you told me who The scriptures tell us that God inhabits the praises of his people. And I hope and pray that for you as we worship together now, that you really had a sense of God inhabiting the space that you are in. I'm grateful to God that God is not limited by four, by these four walls of this church, but that we are able to worship God wherever we may be. Let's pray together. Indeed, God, the sense of your Holy Spirit is tangible. What a privilege it is to worship you. Because God, you deserve all the honor, all the praise. Lord God, we love 
to worship you. We love to sing praises to you. Sometimes, Lord God, to be honest, it's, it's hard to formulate the words and put words together to express how much we love you. But the gift of worship gives us those words. And Lord God, although they may have been written by other people and inspired by others, know this, God, that every word that came from our mouths started and originated in our hearts because of the love we have for you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Morning, church. It's so good to be here and to have the privilege of praying for the offering with all of you. Wherever you are right now, I ask you, please, just to quieten your minds and be still as we enter into prayer. Thank you, Lord, for your beautiful creation. And especially at this time of year, we get to appreciate the fullness and beauty of spring as it brings new life and new hope. You created each and every one of us, and we have life because of you. Thank you. Lord, we surrender all to you as we come before you as your humble servants, asking for forgiveness of our sins so that we may be saved and have eternal life. Father, you know our struggles, and you know our fears and our worries. Thank you that you, we can take comfort in knowing that we can trust in you with all our hearts and that we do not need to rely on our own understanding, that you are in control and your promises make our pathway straight. We come to you with grateful hearts for the blessings you have bestowed upon us. Show us, Lord, where we can share these gifts and our responsibilities you have given us of time, talents, and finances with those that are in need. And may they be multiplied so that more may come to know the kingdom of God. Lord, give us strength and wisdom to know where we can help others, to stand up for each other and live our lives that honor and glorify you in everything we do and say. Bless Jackie as she preaches this morning. May the Holy Spirit fill her so that we may be act, moved to act on your word. We ask this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Good morning, Grace Point, and welcome to this new series. We're really excited about this new season and the new series. For the next two months, we're going to have fun together. So a lot of people have been telling me over lockdown, some of the things that we've been doing for entertainment is we've been 
binging TV. And now you have an opportunity to binge Jesus. You would have heard from Gary about the Chosen series. And if you've been following us this week, you would have already watched the first season of it. And so we're going to be doing that. We're going to be watching this season, having daily devotionals. We're going to be having Bible studies. And then we move to Sunday where we just embed what we've been learning together. It's going to be fun. Won't you join us as we learn? And, and, and I love this part of the season um, and of the series. It was like, get, get used to different. And isn't that really what the season has been about, particularly since lockdown? Everything is different. So how can we find Jesus in the different? I'm going to be reading now from the scriptures, and I'm going to be reading from the book of Isaiah and listen to chapter 43 as we focus on how Jesus calls us by name. Now this is what the Lord says. The one who created you, the one who created Jacob, and the one who formed you, Israel, do not fear. For I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name, and you are mine. I will be with you when you pass through the waters, and when you pass through the rivers. They will not overwhelm you. You will not be scorched when you walk through the fire, and the flame will not burn you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, and your Savior. For I am your Lord. And so this morning, as we focus on, on how Jesus is the Lord of our lives, I, I just want to look at three things today. The first thing I want to speak about is, is how we embrace our imagination. The imagination remains a passion for freedom. We might find ourselves, and particularly during this lockdown, one of the things that we have experienced is limitations to our freedom, limitations to our faith, limitations to our work, limitations to our lives, particularly as we imagined and saw them to be. And yet there is a gift in our imagination which shows us there is a passion for our freedom in our imagination. There are no rules for the imagination. I love children. Now, as you know, I have two children, Rebecca, 25, Daniel, 24. Um, but the thing that I loved most about them is when they were little and they would lose themselves in their imaginary play. And I watched one of the very first things that a person experiences as a child is just this freedom of imagination. And so what I want to say today as we enter the series, as we kind of look at Jesus, particularly through the eyes of others, it is a season for us to set our imaginations free. And I'm inviting you to set the, 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 the location of your faith. And some of us have kind of, we've found ourselves locked in and our faith must be in a particular way. In fact, we, we really kind of experience churches. We must be in a physical building. And now we're actually seeing that our worlds have been blown apart. But in order for us to kind of embrace this different season, I'm inviting us in this series to set our imaginations free, enter the stories, and you're going to see wild things in, the, in, in these, this series. And it's going to be different to what you ever thought. But, but can it be an invitation to set your imagination free? Being made in the image and likeness of our Creator isn't about getting it right or rationally understanding God. Because Jesus taught us that being perfect, even as our Heavenly Father is perfect, is more about loving than about correct belief or following the rules. In many ways, Jesus did not come to establish a set of rules or a, or a code of morality, but rather he came to show us how to express love. We really become the presence of who God actually created us to be, and we become in the likeness of God. So it set your imagination free. Each one of us, every single one of us, has an imagination, an unconscious worldview 
constructed by our individual experiences, the things that are symbolic for us in life, our memories, our traditions, our culture, our archetypes. Just think about the world, how different it is. Think about different religions. We have the Jewish religion and Muslims and Hindus and Catholics and, and Protestants. We have many different expressions of our humanity and we live in many, many different ways. And you see, God calls us to come and, and know that we are made in the image of God and we can trust and we can believe in, in our imagination and our spirituality is a place that will be set free. We've just done a series on be still and know that I am God and the point of the series was to actually enter a deeper spiritual space with God. And this season is going to be about watching movies and watching people on TV and, and getting to touch with the characters. And if you watched it this week, we've, we've seen Nicodemus in ways we'd never imagined. We've seen Matthew, the tax collector, um, just kind of just struggling with a very human condition and a human frailty. We've seen the struggles of Mary Magdalene as she's, as she's really struggled with what it means to, to deal with the pain of a childhood that is imprinted it's upon her soul that it has affected the way she's able to embrace her adult life. And, and these are all modern day stories. We, we are surrounded today with many challenges, with experiences in our childhood that have imprinted upon our souls that make living daily difficult for some of us. It make finding Jesus even difficult. And sometimes we've lived in ways that are, are so counterculture that we, we can't actually find a space to connect with who God is. But the one place we can is if we start setting our imagination free. Maybe today the real prophets of our world are the artists. I, I follow a little bit about what Banksy does. So this famous guy um, goes around the world graffitiing. I mean, I just wonder. And like, I, I saw a thing when I was just kind of Googling last night that um, one of his art pieces sold for 2.2 million pounds. People are crazy about Banksy. They're, just, they're crazy because he makes statements, prophetic statements, and he kind of changes the way we see things. And here he is, drawing cartoons and, and, and facing the social justice issues, particularly around refugees, and, and he uses art as a form. And, and one thing is for sure, we know that, that our Christian faith uses a tradition where art through the Reformation, through the Renaissance, was a, was a form. We look, we look at the created form in Africa, and I believe there is no better formation of creativity in the world than we see in Africa. I, we, we don't realize what a gift it is to drive up to your local checkers or Woolworths, and along the way you will see a vendor who is selling a shaped animal. And right now I'm into flamingos, and, and suddenly you see the spectacular flamingo along the side of the road, and, and here is a magnificent piece of art. And, and we just take that for granted. And somebody has shaped something out of beads and wire, and, and it is art. And so this series is about entering the art, entering the imagination. And how often is our faith a stand or faith that doesn't embrace the creative? You see, we know that we are not on the verge of change as the world. We are changing. Things have changed. There has been a cataclysmic explosion and it is as we embrace this change in the essence of our being that we will be able to function in a new world, in a new way. You know, revolutions come and they change the world. Right now, this pandemic has not been a revolution, but it has changed the world. And so we're invited into this series to set our imaginations free. For some of us, that is just going to be, yes, I've been waiting for that moment. And for others, it's going to be, oh my goodness, Jackie, what are you, have you like, are you a little bit crazy right now? But I'm, I'm inviting you to, to get rid of the limits that you have constructed into your experiences of faith and set your imagination free. 
I, I want to just speak for just a couple of seconds about this amazing gift that we have as, as people that follow the tradition of Methodism. So, you know, we often try and figure out to ourselves, well, what do we actually believe as Methodists? How do we enter our faith journey? And, and there's this wonderful kind of tool. And if you've been following our Hot Topics, they've been using a little bit of that um, as they've kind of grappled with these magnificent, prophetic, spectacular moments for us to really reshape our society. And they've used this as a tool, but I want to put this out there to you. And you might find it really tough to, to say, okay, I'm going to set my imagination free. I'm going to give you a construct that helps you set our imaginations free. And so for us to understand how we process our faith, how we experience our life, Methodism has this quadrilateral that has four dimensions. And the fourth dimension says that our, our world and our faith is impacted by Scripture. One of the things about this chosen series is I've, I've been watching behind the scenes is it has really done a magnificent job of integrating Scripture. And Scripture is just foundational for us. Our world changes on Scripture. So I'm inviting you to come to Scripture during this season with your imagination. Come and hear and taste and smell the experiences of Jesus in a new way. So, so come to Scripture differently. So that's the first thing that's important um, in the Wesleyan tradition and the Wesleyan faith. But I'm asking you to, to break open the way you come to Scripture. And you're going to see that this chosen series is going to help you do that. The second thing I'm embracing, uh, inviting you to is to embrace tradition differently. What I loved about this series is, uh, uh, is that it actually it shows us a lot about the Jewish traditions and the Jewish culture. And it, it starts to make sense of things. If you watch this first series, you would have seen Nicodemus. And, and Nicodemus is a teacher and, and, and he's a leader in the community. And he, and he uses the traditions. And all of a sudden you're seeing the juxtaposition of what Jesus is going through against the backdrop of his tradition. In, in September, as you know, we, we celebrate Heritage Month as a community, and, and we have such a rich, diverse heritage. But even as we come with our different traditions, isn't it amazing? And, and if you were with us today, um, one of the biggest things that we, we, we do as a tradition, as a church, is we have communion together. And even that has just been so different to what we've ever imagined before. But our traditions are a very important part of our spirituality and our spiritual experience. And so as they form a second part of the quadrilateral, I'm asking you to go and spend time on your traditions, your personal traditions, your family traditions, your clan traditions, your cultural traditions, and find a way of embracing your traditions because I believe in the essence of our traditions as this quadrilateral holds is the gift of our spirituality. And we often miss our faith journey because we disconnect our faith from our tradition. Where in fact, as we assimilate our faith into our traditions, we begin to experience the presence of a rich spirituality. The third thing, and particularly as we enter imagination, is how important reason is. So the Methodists wanted to make sure in this quadrilateral that we made sure that scripture was foundational, tradition was foundational, but so was reason. So there is an argument, there is a debate. And I don't know about you, I certainly experience a lot of debate in my spiritual journey. There is a debate in my inner world. One of the things that I, I'm struggling with this week is that I've come across a spectacular artist. And I, I come across him in a, in a way that I'm really embarrassed to admit. He works as a security guard. In fact, he works as a security guard in the hut at, at Grace Point. So he looks after the stuff. And, and I saw some posts on our Glen Furness Residents Association Facebook page. So I've been like scrolling through them and, and looking at them. And I've been seeing this guy that's been advertising these beautiful, beautiful drawings that he does. And, and I've just like... Oh my goodness, this guy is a genius. And I've just discovered that he is actually at Grace Point. So what I have done this week is, and then he, and he made this post that he's out of paper. And, and kind of like, and he needed paper. And I just thought to myself, you know, so it's not fair that some people have so much and others struggle. 
And so I constantly, in my reasoning mind, struggled terribly with the imbalance of, of justice and, and, and resources. And it is a struggle, not just in my heart, but in my reasoning. And so I don't know what you struggle with in your reasoning about where, where, is, where is your reasoning connect, but that is an important aspect of our spiritual journey. And then the final thing that um, the Methodists embrace is our experience. Can we, can we in this series come with all of what happened during this pandemic? What have you been going through? What has your world been going through? How have you experienced your faith journey? And we, and we take those four thring, things. We take scripture. We take tradition. We take reason. We take experience. And we enmesh them into an imagination that is completely and utterly set free. Because one of the things that we discover, particularly when Jesus calls us by name, when he comes to Mary, and, and if, you've, if you've watched this week, you would have, you would have waited. Because as, as you've encountered Jesus through the stories and the eyes of others, you wait. You wait as you, as you see their struggle. You wait as you see their difficulty. Because we know, you see, I love the story because it's one of those stories that you know the ending, okay? That's great. So there's no big surprises. You know the ending, so we can always relax. But one of the things that I was expectant on as I watched the series is I couldn't wait for Mary to encounter Jesus because I knew in that moment of encountering Jesus, her life would be different. And so somehow we, we need to just set our imagination free and, 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 and wait to encounter Jesus. Many people ask me, like, how was your life before Christ and how was your life after Christ? And, and, and I want to speak about the big bang. And I want to speak about encountering Jesus as the big bang. When do you encounter Jesus? Literally, your mind should explode. Your experiences should be radically different. Your traditions should take on new meaning. Scriptures come to light. This big idea, this big bang, this Christ divine presence in our lives, this creation from the beginning has literally changed the world. As we enter an awareness of the presence of Jesus, our lives changed. Michlid of Machenberg made the statement, the day of my spiritual awakening was the day I saw and I knew I saw all things in God and God in all things. I want to say that again. The day of my spiritual awakening was the day that I saw and I knew I saw. I saw and I knew I saw all things in God and God in all things. I wonder how we can enter the series and discover the cosmic Christ, the big bang, the presence of God and see God in all things and all things in God. Understanding this cosmic Christ will change the way we relate to creation, to other religions, to other people, to ourselves and to God. Knowing and experiencing this cosmic Christ will bring about a major shift in our consciousness, just like Saul experienced on the road to Damascus. You won't be the same after encountering the risen Christ. And so it is my prayer that, that somehow we experience a new big bang. I think there's a sense that, that as we come into a deepening consciousness, a deepening awareness of Christ, that it is a bang, it is a, an explosion that goes off. Not just a vague spiritual intuition that becomes specific to some concrete event, but, but actually an explosion of Christ's love, an interface, a connection with Jesus that we will never be able to forget the eternal body of Christ. And one of the things that we experience, the biggest bang, is when we experience the faith journey of one another. You know, people either experience us 
in a way that actually diminishes them or in a way that holds them and shapes them and heals them. And so I'm, I'm asking us to, to re-encounter Jesus, to re-encounter a big bang. To not allow a pandemic to be the biggest bang of 2020, but an encounter with Jesus. And so the final thing I want to speak about this morning is how when Jesus comes to Mary, you know, there's a moment where he comes to her in the season and he just holds her. She's been living and she'd already by this stage changed her name. And I don't know about you, but sometimes we, sometimes we want to start changing our identity. Sometimes we dress differently. We do different stuff because we want to get away from our true identity. So we, we start doing things differently. We buy different clothes. We buy different vehicles. We, we, want to, we want to move away. We want to distance ourselves from our true self. And one of the ways people often distance themselves from their true self is they actually change their name or they don't tell people their true name or they, or they do things from a sense of pretense. And, and they kind of, they're like, you know, everything is fine when in fact everything is not fine. And so she keeps moving away. We see the narrative in the story in a magnificent way that she keeps moving away from her true identity because in her true identity, there's way too much pain, way too much pain. And so the way she deals with her pain is that she just keeps covering up her pain. She just keeps covering it up. And, and, and to the point where people actually identify a madness in her. You see that in the story. And that's just really pain. And how often pain can in fact bring about madness. It can bring about such, such an unstable world. And so, so you, you, you enter the story of Mary. You enter her life and, and you are consumed by this madness, this, this, this moment where, where there is such pain in her that nobody can understand. And yet there's one friend. She has one friend that sees her for who she is. And, and you can see that when she's with this friend, she feels at peace. But not even he knew her true name. So even with our true friends, we can hide our true selves. But we can never, never, never hide our true selves from who Jesus sees. And there is a moment in this movie, and it is spectacular. And, and I'm just wondering, we just can't put that peace in here. And, and hopefully you'll be able to see that moment where, where Jesus comes to her. Where there is her true self in her madness, in her pain, in, in her lostness, in her absolute isolation. Jesus comes and he touches her. And he says, Mary. And it is chilling. And I remember the moment where, where Jesus comes at the end of his resurrection. When she's crying in the garden. And he does exactly the same thing. And he says, Mary. He knows her. He knows her name. He knows her inside out. He knows her back to front. He knows the good. He knows the bad. And it doesn't stop him from calling her Mary from calling her by her name. And I want to say this morning that it doesn't matter what we've done. It doesn't matter who we are. Jesus calls us by name. And when he calls us, there is a choice to turn around. And she does that. She does that in the picture. She turns. And then some. Thing radical happens. There is a new big bang. And you don't want to miss this series. And you, you want to journey with us as we enter how when we encounter Jesus, we don't encounter rules, but we encounter a big bang that knows us by name. Let's pray together. And so, Lord God, you give us Jesus who becomes a visible map. The entire sweep of the meaning of the anointed Christ includes us and creation from the beginning of time. You have been revealing your presence to us from the beginning of time. We are, as people who call themselves Christians, the body of God. And you 
see us. You don't just see the clothes we wear, the places we live, the things we've done. But you see us outside of space and time, outside of experience and tradition and reason and scripture, but you call us by name. And I pray, Lord God, that as we move into the series that we would just be set free in our imagination and in our embracing of that it is okay because you call us by name and you are our God. And so we want to rest in that and, and, and we just pray, Lord God, that we would use you as the visible map of our lives, that you would become the direction the destiny and the reality of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We look forward to seeing you next week, everyone, and have a very blessed week. Now we go into the new week knowing that God speaks so deeply to us of our relationship with God. God knows each one of us and calls us by name, everything we do is a response to God's call on our lives. And the call is so personal. Let us now receive the blessing of God. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen.